In today's video, we're gonna talk about how I find inexpensive cruises and some tips, tricks, hacks, websites that I use to bring the cost of cruises down even further so I can visit more amazing places like this, Ocean K here in the Bahamas, but let's go. What is going on YouTube? Greetings from MSC Maravilia. I'm on the aft end of the ship. You can kind of see the wake there. If the camera was a little higher, you could see the pool back there. It's pretty cool. Beautiful place to just sit and relax here on Maravilia, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about how to find cruise deals, how specifically I find cruise deals, and also some ways to reduce the cost of cruising. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define some terms. After that, I'll show you how I search for affordable cruises, specifically what search engine I use. And then we will talk about some different sites that you can use to cut the cost of cruising. So let's jump into these terms. Okay, so the first term I wanna talk about is total cost of a cruise. What does that include? A lot of people say it only includes the cruise fare, port fees, taxes. But for me, the cruise fare is everything that you kinda of have to pay. So that's cruise fare, port fees, taxes, and gratuities for me. I think gratuities are a must and you should pay them. If you disagree with me, that's fine. But when I talk about total cost of a cruise, that's the price I'm talking about. All the other things are add-ons. You know, they can vary from person to person. Some people need the internet, some people don't. Some people need a drink package, some people don't. Some people need a coffee package like me, some people don't. So I don't really include those in the cost of a cruise because they can be so random from person to person. So total cost of the cruise, cruise fare, port fees, taxes, and gratuities. Okay, so the next term we're gonna talk about is cost per day. I don't hear a lot of cruisers talking about this number, but to me, this number is the best way to compare apples to apples, cruises to cruises. And we'll talk about cost per day more a little bit later, but that's the total cost of the cruise, which is the cruise fare, taxes, port fees, and gratuities divided by the number of days in the cruise and that'll get you what that'll give you what that cruise cost you per day. Okay, the next two terms we're going to talk about, I'm going to put them together. Double occupancy and solo supplement. The reason I'm putting them together is because sometimes they're used interchangeably. Uh, they mean a little bit different thing, but they're very similar, so I want to make sure you understand the difference but also how they're used interchangeably. So a lot of cruisers talk about, solo cruisers talk about having to pay double occupancy. What does that mean? So if you go book a cruise, they'll show you a cost, let's say it's $500 a person. That's the price you would pay if you book for two people. So each person would pay $500. So that cabin would cost those two people together $500, or $1,000, $500 per person. If you book it solo, and it costs you a thousand dollars, you're basically paying the cost that two people together would have to pay. So you're paying double occupancy. Now, solo supplement means how much are you paying over what an individual in a double occupancy situation would pay? So let's say someone is paying $500 like we talked about earlier, and you have to pay a thousand dollars for the same cabin that two people have to pay $500 a piece for then that would be 100% solo supplement. So you have to pay 100% more than one person from a double occupancy cabin would have to pay. Let's say you paid $750, you'd be paying a 50% solo supplement. So the person booking a cabin with their significant other, they'd each pay 500 bucks. So that's $1,000 they're paying for the cabin. You're paying 750 for that same cabin. So you're paying 50% more than one of those people would have to pay. So, so you can see how they're kind of related, but they're a little bit different, but I hear them used interchangeably a lot. Now, I'm gonna tell you something about these two terms in the cruising community. I think they're worthless. They're worthless, and the number one question I get is, do you pay double occupancy? And sometimes I wanna beat my head against the wall because it's such an arbitrary and worthless uh, indicator of value for a cruise. And let me tell you why, let me give you an example. So recently I was looking for an Alaskan cruise and I found two 10 day cruises, exact same itinerary, one on Princess and one on Norwegian. So the Princess, uh, the Princess cruise was $450 per person 
for double occupancy. So two people book that cruise, they pay $900 for that cabin, $450 a piece. I went to book it, it was $900, double occupancy. Ah, everybody freak out, gotta pay double occupancy, all right? $900, it's a 10 day cruise. We talked about cost per day earlier, right? It's a 10 day cruise, so it's a $90 a day cruise. All right, I looked at the exact same cruise on Norwegian. It only had 50% solo supplement. Must be a great deal compared to the Princess Cruise, right? You're only paying, you're not paying double occupancy. You're only paying 50% solo supplement. Must be a great deal, right? Well, the, the cost of the cruise was $1,000 per person if you paid double occupancy. So it was, you know, two people booking a cabin, $2,000, $1,000 a person. For me, I'm only paying 50% solo supplement, so I get that same cabin for $1,500. What a bargain, right? I'm only paying 50%. Uh, I'm not paying double occupancy. Well, what is that? What is that divided by 10? 1,500 divided by 10? $150 a day. So I can take the exact same cruise on Princess for $90 a day, paying the dreaded double occupancy. Oh my God, double occupancy. Or I can pay half of double occupancy, getting a great deal, and pay $150 a day. So you can see why that number is arbitrary and it's not a good indicator of value. You only get an indicator, a good indicator of value when you figure out what the cost per day is and then you compare apples to apples. So don't get hung up on occupancy, double occupancy, paying double occupancy. Don't get hung up on what the solo supplement is because they really aren't an indicator of value for you as a solo travel traveler when you compare cruise to cruise. Okay, the last term I wanna talk about is solo cabins, because I know if I don't mention it, it'll come up, but what about solo cabins? You pay zero solo supplement, they're such a good deal. All solo travelers should travel on, on, in solo cabins and only travel with Norwegian. So in my experience, solo cabins are not a good deal. They're usually actually more than the inside cabin on the same exact cruise, and you know what you call a solo cabin? Or you know what you call an inside cabin that you book solo? It's a solo cabin, <laughs> okay? It's actually a bigger solo cabin because solo cabins are usually much smaller than inside cabins. And in almost every situation where I have compared prices online, the solo cabin is always more expensive than the inside cabin. And I get it. I know the Norwegian people are gonna jump in here and say, but you get the studio lounge. Well, if you, if you wanna pay a premium for the studio lounge, you can. I'm gonna be uh, sailing on a NCL ship in a studio cabin, so I get to see what all the hype is about. But if a cruise is 150 a night for the studio cabin and 90 a night for the inside cabin on a Norwegian cruise, I don't think the solo lounge is worth $60 a night, which would be $600 on a 10-day cruise. I, I, I don't think it's worth that. Maybe it is to you, but it probably, I'm, I'm probably gonna think that it's not worth it, but we'll see. I'm gonna be on NCL uh, getaway and I'll be in a studio cabin. But yeah, I think studio cabins are kind of a marketing gimmick. And let me give you one more example. Let me show you this uh, Norwegian cruise here. So you'll see, here's the price of the solo cabin. You can see that the inside cabin are both cheaper, but check this out. The mini suite was cheaper this day when I was looking at it. I don't know why, some kind of price anomaly. Even though I'm paying solo supplement on the mini suite, it's still cheaper. Again, solo supplement, double occupancy are not a good indicator of price. Studio cabins, you pay no solo supplement at all, but in my experience, they cost more per day than an inside cabin, usually than an ocean view, sometimes more than a balcony, and in rare cases, more than a mini suite. You'd be nuts to book a studio cabin over a mini suite, that's the studio cabin's more expensive. You'd be crazy. Okay, enough about that. Uh, we're going to jump into Cruise Plum here, and I'm gonna show you my favorite way to find affordable cruises. And one of the great things about it is, for those of you who, ha who are addicted to solo supplement amount, you can actually search by uh, how much a solo supplement is. And, uh, but you can also search by my favorite indicator, which is uh, cost per night. All right, let's jump into this. Favorite way to search for cruises. I know a lot of people love vacations to go, cruise direct and some other things, but I've found that this is the best way to search, especially as a solo cruiser. I haven't tried it as a non-solo cruiser, but it seems like it'd also be good for people searching for two, three, and four person occupancy in a room or in a, uh, on a cruise ship. You'll see right here, it says, you know, it's unbiased information 
You know, they're not trying to sell you anything. You cannot book cruises with them. It's just a search engine. They're cruise enthusiasts that know how to design search engines. And that's all it is. I don't know how they fund this, but there's nothing you can buy on here. You can just use it and it's a great tool. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to search on here. My favorite is just the search function, which we'll come back to in a minute. And I'll show you why it's my favorite. But if you're kind of lazy, you don't wanna do a lot of work, there are some pre-made menus for you. Um, I'll go through them really briefly here. These three, price drops, last minute deals, and hot deals. They're not the greatest place to find solo deals. Obviously solo deals is probably better. Search is even better than solo deals, but we'll get more into that in a minute. But I wanna go over each of these real quick so you can see them and see why the functionality on this website is so good. So you click on hot deals and you can see here, you can search by number of passengers and it'll give you the price that you would pay for the cruise based on the number of passengers you select. So right away, it's already superior over most other ways to try to find cruises. If you're a solo cruiser, you can sort by region. So there's a ton of stuff here you'll see right now. This is just hot deals, remember. And I don't know how they classify a hot deal, uh, to be honest with you. I don't really use this one very much, but it's here. But you can, you know, say you're leaving out of South Florida, you want to narrow it down, click on South Florida, and you'll be able to see all the hot deals in South Florida. I'm on a ship right now, so my internet's not the fastest. There we go. <laughs> so you can see what's going out of, you know, South Florida. You got Azamara, which is an expensive cruise line. Everyone knows that. But you can see some deals here. And the cool thing about the functionality of this website is you can go ahead and click on the cruise you're interested in. So let's say you want to go on um, Norwegian Sun. I almost took this cruise, by the way. I love data, and this gives you all kinds of great data that you can make an educated decision on what a cruise is going to cost you. So you'll see it has the base fare here, what the taxes are, what the tips are, and the total cost, and then it gives you the cost per day, which is my favorite metric. And then you can see what the other cabins cost. Sometimes you'll see other cabins are cheaper than the inside cabin. In this case, the ocean view is only $4 a day more. So on this cruise, which I believe is 20 days, would be you know, about uh, $80 more. So not too, you know, not too much more expensive uh, for this cruise. And I think this is an Alaskan cruise as well. Or no, 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 this is a Panama Canal cruise, I think. So it'd be probably cool to have an ocean view and might be worth it to pay an extra four bucks a day. You can also see the history of the cruise and where the prices went uh, over time. And you can see this one's uh, steadily trending down. It's getting ready to happen, but it's just got great data. And then you can obviously see the different port visits and things like that. I don't want to go too much in the weeds there. Uh, we'll do that in a moment. But yeah, this is the hot deals tab. Then you have the last minute deal tab. Uh, there's a much better way to find last minute deals, which I'll show you in a minute. But again, you can break it down. You can search the whole world or you can break it down and say, oh, well, I only want to see the hot deals out of Italy. You'll see a bunch of Costa that are pretty affordable out of Italy, a bunch of MSC that are pretty affordable. And same thing, you can click and get data on that specific cruise. And then I wanted to show you price drops. You'll see here, you can sort it by price drop, which I love. And you can say, okay, this MSC cruise dropped 75%. Might be a bargain. Uh, $137 a day for an MSC cruise. This is how I judge the price of a cruise. That's not really a good deal. Let's sort by price per day. And look, here's a cruise on the exact same, or on a MSC Fantasia, and it's $106 a day. Obviously, it's out of Rio, but uh, that's a good deal. And you'll see in a moment, much cheaper cruises than that by cost per day. These drop-down menus are kind of limited in the data they provide, so that's why I don't really go to them. But again, you can search by solo cruise, and you can if you are obsessed with supplement, you can search by supplement. Oh my God, look, Seaside, 51% below supplement. Wait, $178 for an MSC cruise inside cabin? That's not a good deal. That's not a good deal, even though your supplement is 51% less than what a double occupancy couple would pay. It's again, like I mentioned earlier, it's not a good indicator of a good deal. This is your indicator of a good deal. And if you, uh, actually, let me go back here. If you sort by price per day on here, you'll see these are a good deal, right? This one's 3% supplement. 
you know, the other one was negative 50%, but it's only $57 a day. So you can see why supplement cost or double occupancy, all that kind of stuff is not a good indicator of a good deal. You would think the negative 51% supplement would be a better deal than actually paying 3% supplement, but it's not. <laughs> it's considerably cheaper here, right? Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that more later. So let's jump into the real search, uh, the, the thing that makes this thing super powerful in my opinion, because you can narrow it down to so many different things, which is great. So you click start searching, you select the number of passengers, this will give you the price based on number of passengers, which is a great tool. It only has country of residence, US and Canada. These guys are always updating this and adding more functionality. And so I assume in the future, you'll see more nationalities um, represented, but you can still search cruises out of anywhere in the world. And hopefully, you know, in the country you're in, maybe they'll, you know, honor the price that it's showing you. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but uh, you, you can search out of anywhere in the world and I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, so here we go. We got 5,000 search results or 5,000 pages of search results here. And you can sort by a bunch of different things. Right now it's sorted by date. So you can sort, you know, if you're, hey, I want to take a cruise tomorrow, you can look right away at what's available. Like you could hop on MSC Virtuoso right now for seven days for 88 bucks a night. So you can sort by that. You can sort by vessel, route, number of days. Like me, I'm always looking for really long cruises. Look, here's a 130 day world cruise on Costa, 188 bucks a night. I don't, I wouldn't consider that a good deal, but um, you know, you can do that. You can sort by number of days, uh, which is great. You can sort by cabin and you can limit all this stuff, which I'll show you in a moment. And of, of course, my favorite indicator, actually, let's see what the most expensive cabin is on here right now. Wonder of the Seas, $12,000 per day for a premium star class cabin. That's the most expensive one listed on here right now. The cheapest, MSC Virtuoso out of Hamburg, 55 bucks a day, and you'll see a bunch of MSC on here for most cost effective. It's just something you're gonna see here. And I know a lot of people are like, ah, oh, that's just clogging up my view. I don't wanna see a bunch of MSC cruises. I don't like MSC. Kevin, I like to cruise on Royal. I'm loyal to Royal. Okay, well, you have all of these ways to narrow things down. So you can go here and say, I just wanna look at uh, you know, Royal Caribbean. So you can go here, click on Royal, and now it's just gonna show me the Royal. I can look at cost per day. What's the cheapest Royal cruise right now? Vision of the Seas out of Fort Lauderdale. 10 day cruise, Western Caribbean, 104 a night for a Royal Caribbean cruise. That's freaking awesome. And I know what you're thinking, 10 days divided by 766, that's not, that's $76 a night. Why is it say 104 a night? Because that's the total price that includes everything you would have to pay for the cruise. That's what I love about this. It shows me the real cost of the cruise. It shows me base fare, taxes and port fees, and the tips when it's calculating the number in this main search engine. And so I can see all in on this cruise, I'm gonna pay $104 a night. That's what I love about this. I'm not clicking on what seems to be a great deal and then realizing port fees and, and, uh, and tips, you know, push the price up, you know, double. I know exactly what the cruise is gonna cost me when I'm using this search engine, which is, you know, awesome. Okay, so let's say you're like, well, you know, like this is all mixed up. I don't know what day I wanna cruise. You can sort it by day. You can look by month if you know you wanna cruise in June of, uh, if you know you wanna cruise in, let's say September of 2023, you can, you know, just look at September 2023. If you want specific days, like for me, a lot of times I'm jumping from cruise to cruise and you know I, I pull in on a Saturday and I either wanna jump on a cruise in that same port on the same day, or I want to have a day in between and fly to a new port where there's a cruise. So we wanna look at daily, right? So you can sort, that's what I meant. You can sort by the day you need to sail. So let's say I'm coming in on you know Saturday and uh, I'm also going to select Sunday because if I have to fly to a new port, uh, I can do that. So if you only want to look at inside cabins, which I always do, 
Um, you can just select studios and inside cabins. So now all I'm gonna see right now is inside cabins and studios. Let's say I wanna see the studios. Okay, Carnival Paradise, they have a studio. Look at how expensive per day that studio is. <laughs> studios are not a good deal. Uh, all these studios, look how expensive they are. Um, here's one, 179, that's like the cheapest one. But uh, yeah, you can sort by the cabin type so you can get rid of a lot of the muck that you see uh, in, you know, when you're searching. Here's MSC Meraviglia. We were just talking about those dates I put on there. So this is probably the one I would do. I would just fly up to New York. Or maybe I'd fly, actually, you know what I would probably do in this scenario? I would fly to Vancouver. I would fly to Vancouver and jump on this Grand Princess cruise. Like $106 a night for an Alaskan cruise. Like that's a great number. And it's on Princess, which I love. You can see here, uh, you can go into finer detail here on price, but look at that itinerary. That's awesome. Vancouver to catch a can. Uh, that's awesome itinerary. I would definitely book this cruise if those were the dates I was working with. Uh, I'd just go ahead and fly to, uh, to Vancouver and jump on that. All right, so hopefully you can see how valuable this search engine is, how much detail you can you can get down into, you can even like search by ports of call. Like let's say you want Venice and a port of call. You can search by, you know, cruises that go to ports that you want to go to, or, Hey, I want to skip these ports. I don't want any cruises that go to Nassau Bahamas because a lot of people don't like Nassau. You can search by that. I mean, it's just so much you can do. You can go by vessel capacity, vessel year. I don't want to sail on any old ships. You can do that. I don't want to sail on any new ships. You know, it, it like the functionality of this website uh, you is just amazing. So that's why I like it so much. Okay, now let's talk about what all of you have been waiting for, uh, how to save some money on cruises, some tools and techniques to use. Um, I use a couple different techniques and websites and things like that. So the first one, my friend Andrea, who I met on Sky Princess, she turned me on to this. Uh, website is called Rakuten or something like that. I'll put it up here. There's a link down below and if you sign up I think they give you $30, $30 right away. This is a cash back website so you don't get any money off your cruise but once you book your cruise and pay for it you get money back from them and they do it one of two ways. They'll pay you via PayPal or they'll send you a check. Um, I've done it before. It worked flawlessly. They sent me the money through PayPal it's completely legit. A lot of people use it for a bunch of other things, like you can buy Nikes and all kinds of things, but they do have cruises on there. And the amount you get back per cruise rotates. Right now, you can get 1.5% back on Princess. You can get 2% back on Celebrity, but about two weeks ago, it was 4% back on Celebrity Cruises. They have Celestial Cruises, and I'm sure it rotates, and the percentages change. But it's pretty simple to use. You just make an account, and I think if you use my link below, they'll give you 30 bucks or something like that. And you can refer friends like that too. I don't work for them or anything like that. They just have a referral program down there. You can use it if you want. You can use somebody else's referral if you have someone that uses that website, whatever. I don't care. It's just a great way to instantly get some money back on cruises that you book. Uh, if the cruise that you want to book, you know, they offer a discount. Another way I save some money is through friend referrals with the different cruise lines. Like if you look down below, you'll see I have a referral for Princess. Anybody can do this. I don't work for Princess. I don't have any kind of contractual relationship with them. But if you use the link down below, I think you get $25 off your cruise and they give me $25 off my next cruise. So kind of cool. I think all the cruise lines have some kind of refer program. So find some of your friends that cruise and say, hey, do you have a referral link? They, they might not even know they have one, but anybody can get one. Uh, if you want to use my princess one down below, you can. If you got a friend that cruises princess and you want to use theirs, just tell them to go get their referral link and they'll just get 25 bucks off their next cruise. So that's another great way uh, to get some money off your cruise. Another one is a credit card point system. Like me, I use Chase Sapphire Reserve. Again, there's a link below, but figure out what credit card system works for you where you get points that you can redeem for cruises. You can redeem for other different kinds of travel. I use most of mine for flights and hotels in between cruises. I've, I haven't paid for a flight in four years because of credit card points. I haven't paid for any of my cruise hotels but one because it was really inexpensive and I didn't want to use points on it. Um, so that's another great way to save money on cruising. Okay, so now you know how I 
look for cruises, book them, try to find deals, pay lower costs as a solo, all that kind of stuff. If you know any ways to save money on cruises, you know, comment down below. If you know any good referral links or you have any, I have no problem with you, you know, popping them up in the chat. It'll, I'll have to approve them, but uh, go ahead and throw them out there. Anything to save people on my channel money is awesome. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that thumbs up. And if you like this kind of content and you're not subscribed, consider hitting that subscriber button. We're almost at 100K. I'd love to get there uh, on Enchantment of the Seas. That'd be amazing. Have a little celebration with Royal Caribbean. Thanks for watching. See you next video.